expect there in the Menard stable. Besides a good exercise. Well, Calkins still in the lead now by nearly 20 seconds, followed by Stuart Guerrero. Mike Croft moving up into fourth place. Then Stan Waddles, Michaeli Alvarado, Davey Hamilton, Scott Sharp, Robbie Buell, and Ari Leyendijk. That's the top ten for you. As we've had one yellow today as a result of Richie Hearn's smack with the wall. We'll return with more of the IRL's Indy 200 at Walt Disney World after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Let's get real here. Brakes stop your wheels, but tires stop your car. That's why Goodyear's newest AquaTread, the all-season AquaTread 2, has a deeper, wider aqua channel than the original AquaTread to sweep more water away for outstanding wet traction. And AquaTread 2 has high tensile steel belts for puncture resistance. Think about it. Brakes stop your wheels, but tires stop your car. Get a set of AquaTreads only from Goodyear. Everybody hates to eat and run. We'd rather take it slow. But the way this life is going, gotta grab your food and go. And when all that running round catches up with you at last, get yourself some Alka Salsa and you'll feel better fast. For relief of acid indigestion or heartburn with headache, nothing, not even Pepsid AC or Tagamet HB, makes you feel better faster than Alka Seltzer. Get yourself some Alka Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. Thursday, it's a new hour of comedy because we're spanning the globe for all new video silliness. Oh, sorry, Dad. The all new world's funniest videos. Then, it's Clint. It's Carrie. It's Costner. Well, that's a name I'm not going to forget. Because the show you love is now a series. Bless my balls! The all new before they were stars, a new hour of comedy, Thursday on ABC. Got a body in the basement. Find out for yourself why Jimmy Smith's picked up the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Drama Series on an all new Blue Tuesday. Viewer discretion advised. Uh, Swiss Valley, this is Houston. Now in final launch sequence. Three, two, one. We have lift off. Uh, Swiss Valley, we have your re-entry plotted for Jones, Michigan on Air 60. Touchdown to success. Repeat, success. Green algae could have ruined this beautiful scenic mountain lake, but this man turned pond scum into a miracle pill. Now everybody's eating it. I eat broccoli, cauliflower, and beans for entertainment. I eat algae for energy. And he's making millions selling it worldwide. Some claim this miracle product did more harm than good. What will it do for you? Find out on the next Current Affair Extra. Sunday at 10 on WBND. Nowhere man. Sunday at 11 on WBND. Back at Walt Disney World Speedway, there are 103 laps to go. We're approaching the halfway point. Wayne Sweeney will be giving them that crossed flag to show them the halfway point. The driver is like the sixth place, Michele Alvaretto. You drive with him now. He's moved up nicely. Was up to third just before the stop. Back in sixth right now. Another driver we're keeping track of today is Johnny O'Connell. Solid road racer. There he is in that white number 75 car, three laps behind the lead. Same color as Roberto Guerrero's car. This boy comes to Phoenix, Arizona, drives a driving school down there. Been doing that for years, trying for Bob Bondret, trying to get in Indy cars. This is his first car. He called me a little while back and he says, what do you think, Bobby? We're going to be a little bit close to try to make that race. I said, make it no matter what it takes. You need the experience. He's already up to 11th place. Lynn St. James has been and out of the pit several times in the last few minutes. She's currently 13th. And then there's Stefan Gregoire that's kind of given up his car to a friend. Jack? Stefan, what eventually put you out of this race? My gearbox is uh, broken. So we are not lucky because I did a great race. Very carefully, very safe, and uh, so it's racing. Let's check in with Gary Gerald. Johnny Parsons is here, and here's a driver who's been battling Paul in a 1993 chassis designed for super speedways, not mile ovals. You had a handful, didn't you, JP? Yeah, and the guys have worked real hard to try and get the car comfortable for us, even though we're at a slower speed. And, uh, you know, that's unfortunate, but uh, I'm sure we'll be good at the speedway. Tell 
us about the future. How is this all going to work in the big picture in your mind? Uh, IRL's just, you know, this is the first season and it's growing. It's going to get nothing but better from here on. Uh, everybody's really excited about it. Uh, you know, this is a big event. I I'm really happy to be a part of it. Wish we could have been a little bit faster, but I guess every driver will tell you that, won't he? It was contact with Buddy Lazier that damaged the suspension. Thank you, John. Thank you. Paul? Oh. So there's Calkins, 18 and a half seconds now ahead of Tony Stewart. Only two cars on the lead lap as we've just crossed the halfway point. My guess is with Stewart's car that they're gambling, much like Danny said earlier, on going to the end of the race and have enough fuel to unleash all that Menard horsepower. Hope they have the tire combination, enough fuel, and the engine running good to pull ahead of Calkins at that time. Six lead changes thus far among six drivers. Well, they, Jack also said something interesting there that Johnny Parsons had contact with Buddy Lazier, which might have damaged that right front. That might have been the cause that worked everything loose. It certainly could. It certainly could. In sixth place now, the 14 car, famous A.J. Foyt car. There he is, Davey Hamilton, Jack Root. And, Paul, what a terrific story. Not only hooking up with A.J. Foyt, but for Davey Hamilton, a veteran of super modified racing all across this country. His best friend and his roommate in super modified racing, Billy Vukovic III, who preceded him into IndyCar competition and ran the Indianapolis 500 for a couple of years. Vuki met his untimely death in Bakersfield, California back in 1990. But Davey Hamilton never forgot that he wanted to carry the torch back to Indianapolis in IndyCar competition for his departed friend. On the back of Davey Hamilton's helmet is a simple phrase, in memory and to remember, Vuki III. Now, there are many fond thoughts for Vuki. Don't you know that racing family. Don't you know this is just the type of guy that Floyd would pick to drive the number 14 car to? Oh, without question. Remember him at the Copper World Classic? I mean, he, he was super. Now in the 14 car of A.J. Floyd, what a proud moment that is for him to be able to carry those colors. Well, it is Phil Calkins out in front of Stewart. Guerrero is third, and Stan Waddles is fourth. Under the six laps complete. When you go on vacation, you want to be close to the action. When you stay in Kissimmee St. Cloud, the magic of Disney World is right at your doorstep. Next door is the excitement of Disney MGM Studios. You'll find new discoveries at Epcot. Just around the corner, you'll see the wonders of SeaWorld. Hold on, you're on an amazing adventure at Universal Studios. Stay in the center of it all at an affordable price. Kissimmee St. Cloud, the best vacation value. For your free close-up guide with discount coupons, call 1-800-711-KISS. The sophisticated material that's used to make the cockpit canopy of the F-16 fighter shatter-resistant is the same material we use to make the headlamp covers on the Aurora. So you can imagine how advanced the rest of the car is. Aurora by Oldsmobile. It's your money. Some days I get these really pounding headaches. I used to take Tylenol, but it didn't always get rid of all the pain. So I've been using Advil for a while now. I found that on my tough headaches, two Advil work better than two extra strength Tylenol tablets, better than Tylenol gel caps. And you know, nothing's been proven to last longer than Advil. For my tough headaches, Advil just works better. And now, introducing new Advil gel caplets. One more advance for Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Yeah, I'm working on a pretty big project. And I don't have a lot of money to spend. I mean, I want a Take really it good price. That's our pinpoint pricing. At True Value, we've lowered the prices on over 900 items. So no matter what your project needs, you'll find it at just the right price every day. Hey, it's true. Help is just around the corner. ABC Sports coverage of the Indy 200 at Walt Disney World. Brought to you by the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Make the dream come true. Oldsmobile and your authorized Aurora retailers. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. No non-prescription pain reliever is proven to last longer than Advil. And true value, no matter what you need, help is just around the corner. 
the globe that is the signature of Epcot Center here at Walt Disney World, just off to the southeast of the racetrack here. There's the road that leads into Walt Disney World and past the resorts and, of course, the racetrack. Buzz Hawkins is having a terrific day. Stewart is 14.9 seconds behind him. The early leader of the race and the pole sitter, Buddy Lazier, is with Jack. Well, it was a tough day for Buddy Lazier. Buddy, what eventually did put you out? You didn't go back out after you changed the front corner because you found another problem. Well, yeah, that's right. We, we had a, you know, just a fantastic race car. Even yesterday, we had a certain uh, problem, and we thought we found it yesterday. It was a lot like like driving a car that was very sloppy steering. You couldn't control it. The uh, the steering just took off on its own. It through the race. We thought we found it last night. The crew worked hard all night, and uh, even when we were running up front, the car would literally veer from one side of the racetrack to the other. That's why Johnny Parsons thought maybe you two would make some contact. We may have because I'm going by people. I'm trying to control. It's like having an old sloppy, you know, steering wheel, and that the car took off on its own. And uh, it's a shame because even even with that, the car was very fast. It was great through the fuel load. It was definitely the best race car I've ever had. And here's what eventually put the Delta Faucet entry out. Kind of reminiscent when you say this 10 cent part. <laughs> well, it's only about 26 cents, guys. There's nothing on these cars cost 26 cents. <laughs> yeah, <Jack. laughs> Maybe one tie wrap, Jack, but not. Uh, well, you can a, see a broken one at that. See the disappointment in poor Buddy's eyes. I'll tell you what, there is a very deserving race driver. He's a he good is, race driver. Too. And, and you know what? He did a great job too because he did it with a car that he didn't make a mistake. He didn't put it in the fence. He got smart. He came in and parked the car. Well, we take a look now at Tony Stewart. Look at the interval on the different laps. He's closing down on Buzz Calkins. So. We may have a battle for the lead here once again. A little while ago, the fear was that we'd have only one car on the lead lap, Jackaroot. Well, Paul, remember, we're talking about a game of conservation for Tony Stewart. He is utilizing the three-team effort as well, the three-car effort, getting information from teammate Eddie Cheever and Scott Brayton. The team now feels that they can cut Stewart loose, give him a little more slack, be able to run a little bit more fuel, and that's why he's picked up the pace. Well, right now his teammates Eddie Cheever sits in 11th Scott Brayton sits in 15th going back up to the front of the field there's Buzz Calkins 24 years old from Denver Gary Gerald's got his dad well he's watching anxiously Brad what are the emotions as you watch your son in his first IndyCar event and leading with a chance to win it uh, Gary I'm overwhelmed I just can't believe we're here, number one, and, and, and to be leading this thing for any amount of time is beyond our wildest expectations. What's your, what's your biggest concern or worry right now? Well, just that the car will hold up. I think he can drive it, and I think he can hold on to it, but it, just hope we don't have any mechanical problems. Is this, is this like a storybook deal for oh, you? Oh, Gary, you know it is. Thank you. All right. You talk about emotion, Paul. There's, there's tons of it down here. Calkins in the Reynard. The engineer is Ken Anderson, one of the best engineers in the business, and Steve Rittenauer is chief mechanic. Stewart, of course, has a tremendous amount of experience, and I watch that left front tire as he goes around the track. You can see how he gets down, almost touches the grass. This guy's got a lot of experience on an oval track. Yeah, but, but he's doing a good job because he isn't running into the grass, but he's keeping it clean, he's staying above it. And actually, I worked with Ken Anderson for years at Penske. And he's uh, got a tremendous amount of experience. He's a great shot guy. As we've seen, this track uh, has got some up and down, some elevation changes, a little bit rough. And I'm sure he's got that car handling very nice over those bumps. Indication is that the black flag will now be thrown to the number two car, Scott Brayton. And the reason is that they say he's just been running around the track too slow and has now become a hazard. 127 laps complete. You know, and Bobby Unser, I think it was, there was some talk about how would how would these first races be handled from an official's point of view as we look at Scott sitting in the pit area. And it was interesting that three drivers were told, you're not going to start here this weekend. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go to Jack Aru. Well, Paul, they're really just hunting and pecking now, trying to check and see if they can isolate what the problem may be in the engine compartment. That is not an easy job with an Indy car, as you know. You've got to take the fiberglass fairings off. You've got to take a look at the electronics. The motor at low idle doesn't sound too bad, but they say that they're not able to generate a lot of speed with the car. So now it's just going to simply be take it apart and try and find the gremlin. 
You know, but all due respect for Scott Braden, to answer here just a little bit, Paul, that his slow speed and the reason he kept on going is they didn't have really anything else to gain other than that. If they could stay out on the racetrack, they could get points. This is a, a very few race series. They need to finish every race. It's more important than ever. So they tried to stay out. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, we'll have college hoops coast to coast. Maryland takes on their ACC rival Duke. USC battles Cincinnati, or Texas meets Texas Tech. Don't miss all the regional action on the Payne Weber College Basketball tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. They continue to work on the car, but Scott Brayton says, well, it's time to climb out of this thing. You get that many parts off of it, it looks like the day is pretty well done. Yeah, that's got to be disappointing. I know these guys came down here with high expectations, uh, wanted to do awful good. And the Menard cars have tested down here so much. They really put a big effort into being ready and trying to win this race. I guess as much as I ever see. We watch Tony Calkins continue, or Buzz Calkins, to continue to maneuver out ahead of Tony Stewart. Calkins' best finishes in Indy Lights have been thirds, and they have been on one-mile ovals in Phoenix and Milwaukee. So she certainly got the experience to run there at the front and to figure out how to stay in front. Bobby, what do you figure his emotions are right now? I mean, he's still got one more fuel stop to go, uh, but he's got to be pretty pumped up, and he's got to be keeping an eye on what Tony Stewart's doing and what that gap is. Oh, absolutely, because he, everybody that's running a Cosworth engine knows that the Menards or the Buick is going to have more horsepower. So they're all wondering, you know, if I run him out of fuel, if I run him low enough, the teams are checking on each other. All this stuff is just happening down there because of such a big disparity in the horsepower, which means fuel. You know, right there, I think we just saw a good example of, of how bright he's driving. He's been very careful on getting past some of these cars. There's the 20 car. That's Tony Stewart, second place, rolling into the pits. Doesn't Assume look like it's routine. he's fast. With 66 laps to go, Jack Aruth. Well, it should be a nominal stop for Tony Stewart. As we said to you before, they feel they have the sufficient fuel to go the distance now. They're going to give him the green light. Stewart showing a lot of poise during these pit stops, trying to be deliberate, making sure there aren't any mistakes. It costs him about a second to a second and a half. There again, in 18 seconds flat, he tries to get back up to speed. And there you hear him. He finally lights the tires up at the end of pit road. Exactly well, he, what you were talking about, he Bobby. He just about killed the yeah. engine. Almost bought the farm right there. That would have cost him one or two laps if he had killed that engine. Maybe three. That far away from the pits would have really hurt him. But it also hurt him just going out that slow. He probably lost a second or two. And he looked awful slow coming down pit lane. Roberto Guerrero moved into second place with that pit stop. And Gary Gerald continuing to track the Falcons car. Paul, well, they're already taking every precaution. They're talking him around, not on every lap, but they're telling him to be so very careful. They're trying to keep him cool. We expect his second and final stop inside of 10 laps now. They're conferring right now. Kenny Anderson making a decision. We'll see him in shortly. Let's go to Jack. Well, Gary, the man that sat on the pole for last year's Indianapolis 500 hopes he can do it again this year. But at the Walt Indy 200 to Walt Disney World, it was an early departure. Yeah, it was a very difficult day for us. You know, I, I hit the fence in the warm-up yesterday, and I think something, obviously, I must, you know, have done something to the car because right from the start, it was just so loose, I couldn't drive it. I was just in the guy's ways, and I didn't want to create a problem, which I almost did anyway, so I stopped, and uh, I'm just happy to be back with Menards, and, and I think that... Uh, We've got more exciting races to come. Scott Brayton, watching the performance of your teammate, Tony Stewart, is there any concerns at all anymore about fuel, or can he go the distance and really crank it up? Well, I can't really say. Tony looks like he's running the best of between Eddie and I, and, uh, you know, I'm sure they're going to do everything they can do to get him in the winner's circle. I wish him the best of luck. Well, for Buzz Calkins, it's been 71 laps since his last stop. So he should be solidly in the window now, due to stop in two laps, according to the team. There's Lynn St. James. He runs back in 13th place, 11 laps behind the lead, but 
She's been in and out of the pits most of the time today. She's obviously struggling with something on that car. She's one that I talked to two days ago that was really having handling problems. This track, again, is so fast, and with the way it's built, it's a, it's a real demanding track for chassis handling. And Lynn's has been the front end. It's been kind of weaving back and forth on her. So that's the problem that she's been having since she's been here. Calkins, Guerrero, Waddles, Michaeli Alvaretto. Tony Stewart up in the fifth place now after his stop, and that's his final stop of the day. Then Robbie Buell, Johnny O'Connell, Eddie Cheever, Davey Hamilton, and Scott Sharp. That's your top ten. So keeping an eye for a stop by the leader of the race. Should be due in within the next minute. There's Roberto Guerrero coming into the pits. He comes out of second place for this stop. Well, that was tough. They put a he, his pit before him had their tires out. He almost couldn't get in his own pit, Paul. Giving a long push to Ari Leyendijk as he comes out, and the leader of the race comes in. That's the second time for him. He's obviously got some problem. I don't know if it's clutch or whatever, but he's got some kind of problem because he couldn't get out the first time. Watching the leader, Calkins. Nice, smooth work. Everybody's taking their time, and that can't be easy. And there's Guerrero. Hawkins is still the leader. Waddles is assumed second on the racetrack, followed by Alvaretto. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Paul, you can see as Hawkins got away, it was very, very slow. And one of the problems was they ran out. They used every drop of fuel from the gravity tank. And they had to lean over, bang the fuel around the backside. They lost about three seconds to disengage because they didn't know that all the fuel had gone into the car. Roberto Guerrero had his problems as well as he stalled it trying to come out of the pits. There's one of the veterans having trouble getting it rolling. Hawkins now coming back up to speed. And Roberto Guerrero, as he headed into the pits, faced an obstacle course. Here's a look at it. Another crew had some tires laid out that made for a very sharp turn in and a little bit of confusion. He started to turn into the wrong pit and then came back out and around. You can watch him light up the right front tire of the smoke cob off of it there because he was disturbed that he couldn't get into his own pit there. That's something you don't like to see. The teams usually work together, but uh, again, they're a little green. They're probably not used to that. So the Indy 200 at Walt Disney World continues 55 laps to go. Announcing a powerful breakthrough of incredible proportions. Incredibly small proportions. New Actron, a powerful pain reliever with ketoprofen, finally available without a prescription. Actron is so powerful, just 12 and a half milligrams are as effective as 200 milligrams of Advil or 650 milligrams of Tylenol for headaches and body pain. New Actron, the pain reliever that's so small because it's so powerful. 1874, the first transatlantic cable connecting Ireland and America. It was made by Siemens. That was then. This is now. Today, phone companies and businesses use Siemens switches to send and receive voices, images, and data together for desktop video conferencing, wireless communications, and high-speed internet access. Siemens technologies keep you in touch and on top. Siemens. Precision thinking. McDonald's presents future Olympic hopefuls. Carlos Tapia Ruano, whose innovative soccer play could lead his country to the gold. Uta Grunewald, who might someday stun the world with her devastating backstroke. Akin Bowali, who will develop the blazing speed that will make his country and his village proud. The powerful Anatoly Nozovitsky, a name to remember in weightlifting. Kelly Peterson, equestrian events. Pericles Sinopolis, Greco-Roman wrestling. Sachiko Tanaka, volleyball. Bob Watson, rings. Alessio Franzoni, cycling. And Jacques Boucle, for whom discus seems the most likely event. McDonald's is proud to sponsor today's U.S. Olympic team and to help keep the dream alive for tomorrow's Olympic hopefuls. Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, Raymond Floyd, and Jim Colbert. It's swing time for four of Golf's best in the Senior Skins game. Next, here on ABC Sports. But now, this young man, 
We're back at Walt Disney World Speedway, 52 laps to go, but we are under yellow, and that emergency vehicle is clearing the course after Stan Waddles got into the wall on the, actually the fence on the inside with a quick spin. Let's take a look at that. There is Waddles as he was walking away from the car after climbing out, so it's obvious he's, uh, he's not injured. But it was a quick spin, and it did bring out the yellow. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Well, let's update the situation relating to the leader, Buzz Calkins. We talked about the experience of Laurie Garish. You've just come on with this team now. You've got this youngster out here in front. We saw all the fuel go into the car. Now, how much fuel have you got in the car, and is it a concern? Uh, we got, uh, we emptied the fuel tank. Uh, all the fuel's in the car. That We've got way enough fuel to finish the race. Uh, we got a fantastic mileage. Buzz Calkins is such a smooth driver. We're getting close to two miles, uh, two miles per gallon. You're obviously impressed. Are you surprised? Uh, no, not surprised. I knew the kid was smooth. How about that, Paul? Well, well that's Gary good. We were, we were worried about whether he had enough fuel. Now we know. Let's go to Jack. Well, as Gary Gerald was talking to Buzz Calkins, I'm talking to Ari Leyendijk. And Ari, your problems that eventually put you out of the race started all the way back during the first pit stop. The first pit stop, I ran out of fuel, and uh, that, had, that gave me problems leaving the pits. Then when we went back and started again, uh, I couldn't get the, the the gear in first gear. I think it stripped or something. And then the second pit stop, no gears at all. But uh, uh, the team has done a good job for the amount of time we've had. The Brian car today was running, was good. I was handling good, and I think I could have been up there uh, for the win. But the pit stops and the problems with the gearbox really uh, killed us today. How about giving a grade to all of the rookies and how they've performed out there in race traffic and everything that's so critical to one mile oval competition? I tell you, these guys that have raced on the sprints and on the midgets, these guys, they know what they're doing because I really didn't have a problem with anybody out there. Uh, some of the guys that have, are having problems, like, uh, like some of the Menard cars, I'm not sure who's behind the wheel, but uh, you know they have a problem and they get out of the way and they give us room and uh, it's been really good. It's been really good. Phoenix, the next stop, as you know, guys, Another mile oval. Well, there's the running order after 149 laps, and uh, the pace car should pick up speed shortly here because they've already indicated just one more lap to go back to the green flag. And then it's 50 miles, 50 laps to the finish. This yellow really helped out Robbie Buell. He hadn't made his second pit stop of the race, was able to make it under the yellow, and is now running in third place. Some others to note, Michele Alvaretto started 14th, is now running in fourth place as we go back to green flag racing with Buzz Calkins at the start of the field. You heard Lori Garrett say that he's proud of this kid and thinks that he has the moxie to go all the way. Stewart came across the line, of course, on the restart, close behind. And Robbie Buell is on a lap of his own, one lap down. You know, we really haven't seen any mistakes from Calkins all day. We've seen the pitch group be pretty good, minor problems, but overall, he's done a good job, I think. Bobby, that you and I were talking about, is that everybody seems to be pretty fair about their passing. Nobody's holding anybody up. You know, it's uh, good pacing and traffic and, and good racing. Now you can see the interval back to 